Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to talk about installing applications on your Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Okay, so I've done a lot of videos in the past, tutorial type videos on how to get things installed and working on your Raspberry Pi. But I can't possibly cover uh, every single application that you guys might be interested in. I typically cover the ones uh, that I use on a regular basis. However, what I want to do today is kind of show you a process for how to install an application. Some decisions that you should make and then uh, ways to overcome issues that you might run into. So let's start first by opening up the command terminal. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is FL Digi. So let's go over to the website for FL Digi. And we'll go ahead and click on the files tab right here. And the FL Digi link. Okay, scrolling down through here. Uh, this is the file that we would use if we wanted to compile this from source, uh, this 4.1.08. That's the absolute latest and greatest uh, on, on the FL Digi download page. Now, let's go back to our Pi and take a look at something. So, the easiest way to install an application is just with sudo apt-get install FL Digi. The problem is, is we don't know before we install it yet what version we're going to wind up with. And sometimes the repositories can have really old versions of applications. So what we want to do is say apt show FL Digi. Go ahead and hit return. And you guys can look right here and see which version this is. We haven't installed anything. We've just uh, requested some information about the version of FL Digi. So this is 4.1.01, and the one from over here was 4.1.08. In this case, uh, it's probably only a few minor uh, maintenance releases, uh, difference between the one in the repository and the one that's the, uh, on the FL Digi website that is, that is the absolute latest and greatest. So in this case, I'm going to take the easy way out. Uh, I'm not going to worry probably about those maintenance releases. And I'm just going to use sudo apt-get install FL Digi. Now, as time progresses, uh, maybe this package becomes dated in the repository and you want to try out some new feature that the FL Digi group has released, in that case, then you'll want to compile from source. Uh, but it doesn't always make sense to do it one way or the other. But this is how you can kind of go in and look for some information and figure out which way you want to go. So let's go ahead and clear that screen out. And let's take a look at something else. We'll head back over to the web browser. Now, this is the uh, website that I've created to go along with this video series. A lot of these sections will have uh, video references right at the top. So if uh, you need a little bit more help, you might reference back to one of the other videos. But I want to go through installing JS8 because I know that I'm going to run into some issues trying to get this installed. So we're going to start copying the commands and pasting those into our Pi. So we've moved to the downloads directory. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and download the JS8 call application. Now you'll notice this reference is 1.1 as of the time I'm recording this video. That's the latest. 2.0 is on the horizon and the release candidates are out there in the wild but it's not an official release yet. So let's go ahead and paste this in, and we'll give that a second to download. While it's downloading, I'm going to go ahead and copy the next command, which will be our install command. So this is just about wrapped up. So we'll go ahead and paste in our install command. Now, like I said, I fully expect to see uh, some dependency errors as this runs. And there they are. So you can see the dependency problems here, 
and then a whole host of uh, different things that the package relies on. So we could go through here one at a time and say try to run down this particular package and get it installed and then come down to the next package and try to get it installed on and on down through the list. An easier way to fix that, let's clear the screen out again. An easier way to fix that is sudo apt hyphen hyphen fix hyphen broken space install. And we'll go ahead and hit the return key on that. And that's going to look for the dependencies from that last package that we tried to install that failed. Uh, so when it asks, we'll just go ahead and hit yes. And we'll give that just a couple of seconds to get installed. Okay, so now that those dependencies are installed, we can go back and run the install command again. So from the website, it'll give you uh, the commands here uh, to fix the broken dependencies. And then it'll tell you to repeat that uh, package install command. So we'll go ahead and run that. And this time we should see it go through without any issues whatsoever. And there you go, it is installed. Let's go take a look at that in our main menu. We'll come down to sound and video and you can see that it is installed correctly. Okay, so let's take a look at something else here. I'm gonna skip past a couple of these, but I wanna come down to FT8, okay, or WSJTX. We're gonna go ahead and install this one now. Here's where I can get into trouble from time to time. If I already have JS8 call installed on my system and then I do a video for FT8, well, the dependencies are the same for JS8 call and FT8, or fairly close anyway. So if I already had JS8 call installed and then tried to do a video on FT8, I wouldn't see any dependency errors. And then you guys come along, you don't have JS8 call installed, and you try to watch my tutorial video, and you run into dependency issues. So that's one of the reasons I always try to start with a base system with nothing installed when I'm doing a tutorial video. So let's go ahead and walk through this so you guys can see it. Now we're already in our downloads directory, so I'm gonna skip that first command. And we're going to grab this second command here, which is the download. You'll see we are in our downloads directory. So let's go ahead and paste this in and hit return. And let's go ahead and grab our next command, which is the install command. All right, after that finishes downloading, we're gonna just paste in our install command and hit the return key. And you should see this go through without any dependency errors whatsoever. And it looks like it did. So let's check our menu up here. And under the sound and video, you can see WSJTX right there. So depending on uh, what you may already have installed, you might not run into a dependency issue. Had we tried uh, WSJTX first, we would have run into the dependency errors. And then when we went to install JS8 call, it would have installed with no issues whatsoever. So it all depends on where your, uh, where your system is at and what you already have installed on it for dependencies. Okay, before we wrap this up, I do want to take a look at one particular application, and that is Chirp. Uh, and the reason is, is Chirp is updated on almost a daily basis. So any directions you find online can quickly become dated. So let's head over to my reference website. And we do need a few dependencies in this case. So we'll go ahead and copy this first line and paste this in and give this a minute to install those dependencies for us. Once that finishes up, I'm just gonna clear the screen and we're going to come down through here and copy the next few commands over. So we're just gonna make a directory and move into that new directory with this next command. All right, and the next command here is the wget, which is your download command. But let's take a look at this. I'm downloading this file right here, which is October 29th, 2019. Let's see if that's the absolute latest file here. 
So let's head over to the Chirp website. We'll click on Download. We'll scroll down to this section here for other Linux users. And we'll go ahead and click to download the latest version. Now, it's got some things highlighted here because I'm actually on a Mac right now with using VNC to connect to the Pi. And it does look like that October 29th is the latest file. If it wasn't, what you would need to do is take a look at this file name here, make a note of it, and you would need to substitute it in three different places. So the first one would be here. You can see that's the file name. Then the next place is right here. That's the file name again because we're untarring it. And then the final place that you would need to change that is right here. So it would create a directory uh, with a different date on it. So this, this uh, directory would be different. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that because that is one of those applications that uh, definitely changes quickly. And I'm sure there are others out there as well. So let's go ahead and paste in our next command since that is the latest file. And that'll download it. While it's downloading, I'm going to go ahead and copy the next command here and paste that in. So this is going to untar it and unzip it. That's simple and quick. And let's go ahead and move to the new directory that it's created. And now that we're in that new directory, we're going to run this final command here to install it. So we'll paste that in and go ahead and hit return and give that just a couple of seconds to get installed. Now that that's finished up, let's move back to our home directory with cd space tilde and let's clear that screen. And to start chirp, uh, and you can do this from anywhere uh, in any directory, it really doesn't matter, uh, you can type chirp w and go ahead and press return. You'll see this box when you first uh, try to run it, and it just tells you that error reporting is enabled. We'll go ahead and click OK. And there is our Chirp program up and running. All right, before we wrap this up, I do want to tell you guys about this web page by DL1GKK. Now, I have included several applications to be installed uh, with the web page that I have written, but this is another great source of information. Uh, scroll down through here to his table of contents and you can see several other applications that I haven't covered as of yet. So just wanted to tell you guys about this great resource. So I know this final part of the series didn't really tell you how to install any particular application per se. What I wanted to do was kind of give you a set of tools that you could use when you were installing any package. So I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you did like this video. Click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified of future videos like this. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.